NASA has never been on the moon. Not me, but some people around the globe still say this. Believe it or not, perhaps the most widely believed conspiracy theory ever is that NASA's moon landing in 1969, led by Neil Armstrong on the Apollo 11 mission, was a complete hoax designed to politically undermine Russia. Some even suggest that the unbelievably believable footage was actually filmed by one of the greatest directors of all time, Stanley Kubrick, in a studio. But you and I don't believe that, do we? So why are we talking about this now? As time goes on, conspiracy theorists are becoming convinced of this seemingly solid argument. If NASA landed on the moon in 1969, why hasn't it sent anyone back in nearly 60 years? They have a point. A decade and half a century has passed, and NASA still hasn't sent any astronauts back to the moon. Even NASA Artemis mission is again facing some serious troubles. What could be the reason? How did did they manage to land men on the moon in 1969, but not today? What are we missing, or is NASA really hiding something about the moon from us? Basically, NASA didn't plan to go back to the moon until Donald Trump and Mike Pence made it a big priority, setting a goal for 2024. To meet this deadline, NASA used an old design from President Bush's time and combined it with some parts from President Reagan's era, creating the space launch system. However, the SLS was not not at all designed to land on the moon. Naturally, it faced trouble reaching lunar orbit. NASA then decided to focus on safely launching and bringing astronauts back, leaving the moon landing details to be sorted out later. To fill the gap in their moon landing plan, NASA offered a prize to any private company that could build a moon lander. The real reward was the honor of landing people on the moon. The competition came down to three companies, DTIC, Blue Origin, and and SpaceX. DTIC's plan was not practical, so out of the picture. And Blue Origin's Blue Ball lander was still in development while SpaceX's Starship was impressive but incomplete. NASA eventually chose SpaceX and their ambitious plan to land the largest rocket ever on the moon. SpaceX says that Starship is the most powerful rocket ever made but has some limits. It can carry 100 tons to the moon or Mars, but it needs to be refueled in space to do this. Starship can move 100 tons into space, but to get that much to the moon, it needs to be refueled in orbit. You see, this process is complex. Starship doesn't just need a little fuel, it requires a full refill with about 1,000 tons of propellant. Here's a simple breakdown. If each Starship can carry 100 tons and 1,000 tons are needed, you would need 10 Starships to carry the fuel, plus one more for the refueling ship and one more for the actual moon journey. That makes a total of 12 starships. SpaceX doesn't fully reveal that Starship can only carry 100 tons to the moon if 11 other starships are launched first. The fuel used in space has to be kept very cold, and some of it might boil off, so around 14 to 15 Starship launches might be needed for one moon landing. If the first test mission doesn't crash, SpaceX might need about 30 Starships for a successful Artemis moon landing. SpaceX's current rocket Starship is the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built, but it can only carry about 50 tons of stuff into space. And to carry more, SpaceX needs to build a new version called Starship V2, which isn't made yet. Also, the first version of Starship V1 still has some stability problems that need fixing before it can dock with other space stations. For Starship to be worth the money, it needs to be able to land and be used again within a day. SpaceX is working on these issues, but they haven't been solved yet. NASA is also working on a mission called Artemis 3, which could launch in the next two years if they solve their current problems. Four astronauts will travel on NASA's SLS rocket and go into a special orbit around the moon called a near rectilinear halo orbit. This orbit is like a long oval path that brings them close to the moon every six days, which helps with communication. They need this orbit because the SLS rocket can't reach a lower one. The crew will stay in this orbit while they wait for their Starship lander. Only two astronauts will land on the moon while the other two stay in orbit for a week. The Starship lander will need to perform a special maneuver to land on the moon. This will test if its engines, which use very cold fuel, can start up after being in space for a long time. 
time. If something goes wrong, they'll have to wait six days for another chance. The landing has to be done automatically because the Starship is so big that controlling it by hand isn't practical. Although past missions had some computer problems, they still landed successfully. SpaceX's Starship is different from older models, and they are still testing how to land it and the new landing gear. They need to make sure the Starship can handle the uneven moon surface. Astronauts will use an elevator to descend 50 feet, which is also a new method because lunar dust is another challenge they have to tackle. SpaceX is working on these major aspects, but what about NASA's Viper mission? This mission was supposed to send a rover called Viper to the moon to look for water ice. But to everyone's surprise, it has been canceled. Even though the rover was ready to go, they decided not to launch it. The Viper rover was supposed to explore the moon's south pole and help with future plans to live on the moon. It was going to be delivered by a special landing vehicle called Griffin, part of NASA's Artemis program. Why is it canceled? Because it was becoming too costly for NASA. NASA has a rule that if a project's cost goes over budget by more than 30%, they have to review if it should continue. The Viper mission was initially budgeted at $250 million and set to launch in 2022, but costs increased to $433 million and the launch was pushed to 2023. This was mainly because the Griffin lander, which was part of a commercial partnership, didn't perform as expected. Another lander called Paragon was launched in January 2024, but had problems and didn't reach the moon. It was directed back to Earth and burned up over the Pacific Ocean. Astrobotic, the company responsible for the Griffin lander, needed more time for tests, so they delayed the launch from 2023 to 2024. This caused the cost of the Viper mission to rise even more, leading to its cancellation. Now, instead of the rover, NASA will send a cement block. But did canceling the Viper mission actually save any money? NASA said yes. It saved at least $84 million. If they delayed its launch to 2026, it might cost $200 million instead of $84 million. NASA's Viper mission was supposed to land on the moon's south pole. It had a launch window from September to November. However, there were delays with the Griffin lander, which made things uncertain. Even though Viper was canceled, NASA will use its instruments for other missions. Griffin will now show how to land big items on the moon. It will initially carry a test load of 430 kilograms, even though it costs $383 million to develop. Other companies or international partners might also use Viper in the future. So NASA was making slow progress with its Artemis program. But very recently, NASA's Artemis moon landing program has faced a new problem with the Mobile Launcher 2 platform. It was also originally supposed to cost $383 million. However, the cost has now increased to $2.5 billion, and the project won't be ready until at least 2027. And without ML2, the mission will be incomplete because it will upgrade the Space Launch System to its Block 1B version, which is needed for future Artemis missions. But there have been delays in building it, and the contractor Bechtel has been blamed for not doing a good job. These problems, along with NASA's limited budget, could put the whole Artemis program at risk, because the Project Artemis 2 is already in development. The second core stage of the Space Launch System rocket, which was built in New Orleans, will be sent to Florida for Artemis 2. It will be fitted with equipment at Kennedy Space Center before being combined with solid rocket boosters and the Orion spacecraft. This rocket is set to launch no earlier than September 2025 and includes improvements from the first core stage. Despite some cost overruns and delays, this is important for future moon missions. Similarly, SpaceX is also working on a new version of the Dragon spacecraft to help bring down the International Space Station. This spacecraft will have a bigger trunk for extra fuel and power and use thrusters to lower the ISS's orbit. It will dock with the Japanese Kibo module and take care of the ISS's deorbit after the final crew leaves. The Falcon Heavy rocket will likely launch this spacecraft, though the exact rocket is still being decided. So a proper moon landing is originally not that easy. The reason? First hurdle is cost. 
cost. The old Apollo missions to the moon were very expensive, about $26 billion back then. Today, Artemis costs even more, with around $90 billion spent over 10 to 20 years. This is still less than what Apollo missions cost when adjusted for inflation. It's cheaper to build new rockets than to reuse old ones. Next challenge is politics. Back in the Apollo days, going to the moon was about showing off national pride during the Cold War. Now it's more about long-term goals and being careful with money. NASA needs to be diplomatic and get support from various places to fund the project. Finally, it's about safety. Today, people and politicians want missions to be very safe, which makes progress slower and testing more thorough. Artemis missions are planned to stay on the moon longer and include more equipment like water, air, and fuel. This means they need bigger rockets and more complex planning. Unlike Apollo, which focused on landing on the moon, Artemis is more about doing science and setting up a permanent base, especially near the moon's south pole where there might be water ice. This makes the Artemis missions more complicated but also more focused on exploring and learning. So, while we're ambitiously planning missions to Mars, these are basic hurdles we're still facing in landing on the moon. Let me know what do you think about it in the comments below. And speaking of Mars, have you heard that there's a major breakthrough regarding Mars and SpaceX? It's truly historic. If you don't want to miss, click on this video to find out more.